Greetings and welcome to Monday Morning Coffee. May our God, the God of everything, be granting you all grace and peace and mercy throughout the entire week. Now today we're continuing our study on the fruit of the Spirit and we're continuing on with the topic of faithfulness where we were last week. If you haven't seen that episode or the episodes before that, you can go to the comment box below. There'll be links to both of those things. Now, as I said, we're back on the topic of the fruit of the Spirit, and we're going to go to our key scripture, which is Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. There Paul writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. As we continue our discussion on faithfulness, I think it's important to reiterate what we learned last week, that this is not some passive or uninvolved belief. Instead, faithfulness is representative of what we are doing in our lives, the way we're evidencing our faith in Christ. Now, there's a story that is told of a missionary, John G. Patton. John G. Patton was wanting to go to an island where he was going to witness to a tribe who some 19 years earlier had eaten the missionaries who came there, a tribe of cannibals. And as he was preparing to go, a deacon in his church confronted him. And this deacon said to Mr. Patton, The cannibals! You will be eaten by the cannibals! To this, John G. Patton replied, Mr. Dixon, you are advanced in years now, and your own prospect is soon to be laid in the grave, there to be eaten by worms. And I must confess to you that whether I live or I die, Serving and honoring the Lord Jesus, it makes no difference to me whether I'm eaten by cannibals or by worms. And in the great day, my resurrection body will rise just as fair as yours in the image of our risen Redeemer. It isn't just stories like these, life and death stories of a missionary that reflect faithfulness. In fact, there's a story of an elderly preacher who was being rebuked by a deacon at his church because in the previous year, only one young boy had come to know the Lord as his Savior. The preacher was very discouraged and, in fact, was considering that day as he was preaching, resigning from the church. But after the service ended and after everyone had left, a young boy came up to the preacher, a young boy named Robert, and Robert looked at the preacher and he said, Preacher, do you think that if I study hard and I work hard that I can one day become a preacher or a missionary and reach souls for the Lord? The preacher smiled as he looked down at the boy, and he told him something like this, That does my heart good, young Robert. Yes, yes indeed. I believe that if you want to, you will indeed become a preacher. Many years later, an aged missionary returned to London from Africa. He was respected by all and, in fact, was even invited by nobles into their homes. He had won many souls for the Lord Jesus Christ in his efforts as a missionary, and in fact, he had even won over some of the most savage chiefs in Africa. This age missionary was Robert Moffat, father-in-law to David Livingstone, and the same Robert who sat in that small church with that elderly preacher and asked him if one day he might become a pastor or a missionary. I think the faithfulness of that elderly pastor may have played some role in Robert Moffat becoming a missionary that won many souls in Africa. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 3, 7 for another scripture reading. So then, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each one will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Now let's move forward to the beginning of chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Let a man regard us in this manner, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. Now that word trustworthy is the same word that we are translating as faithfulness in Galatians 5:22 and 23. But to me... It is a very small thing that I may be examined by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even examine myself, for I am conscious of nothing against myself, yet I am not acquitted by this. 
but the one who examines me is the Lord. If I can summarize what Paul just said, it isn't our job to be worried about any growth that is happening. It is our job to be worried about our faithfulness. We aren't to put any weight at all towards what another human believes about the success or the lack thereof of our ministry, whatever that may be. But instead, we are simply to work at what the Lord has called us to do and to be faithful in that effort. Now, we're not finished with the study on faithfulness. we got one more week of it. I hope you will join us again here next week as we finish off this topic and move on to the remainder of the fruits of the Spirit. Remember, the world is your mission field. Now, go out and reflect Jesus into it. Thank you.